High speed rail is a type of rail transport that runs significantly faster than traditional rail traffic. Using an integrated system of specialized rolling stock and dedicated tracks. It is the fastest ground-based commercial transportation. Though there no single standard speed that applies worldwide to consider in defining a high-speed rail, but lines in excess of 200 km per hour or 120 miles per hour, are generally considered as one. Many countries in Europe and Asia have developed high-speed rail for passenger travel, although some systems also offer freight service. Japan was the first country to develop a high-speed rail system, the Takedo Shinkansen. Operation began in 1964, spanning 515.4 kilometers, connecting the three largest cities of Japan, from Tokyo via Nagoya to Osaka. The network has expanded to currently consist of 2,764.6 km. As of 2020, Japan has 3,041 km high-speed rail system lines in operation, 402 km lines under construction, and 194 km approved lines for construction. While China built over 37,900 km of high-speed rail as of December 2020, accounting for more than two-thirds of the world's total. China also has the fastest conventional high-speed rail in regular operation, with Beijing-Shanghai high-speed railway reaching up to 350 km per hour. The Shanghai Maglev train, opened in 2004, is the fastest commercial passenger maglev in operation, at 430 km per hour. In 2007, the Euroduplex TGV trains broke a record of 574.8 km per hour, making it the fastest conventional wheeled train. The Chuo Shinkansen in Japan is a maglev line under construction from Tokyo to Osaka, at commercial speeds of 500 km per hour, with operations due to start in 2027. Though, world record shows that SC Maglev trains is the fastest train with its highest speed, up to 603 km per hour during the test run on April 2015. Here in Southeast Asia, high-speed rail was introduced in late 2010s. However, actual progress started just recently. Today, we will feature the under-development high-speed rail system in Southeast Asia. Coast Rail Link, Malaysia. The 665 km under construction railway infrastructure project connects from the northeast city of Kota Baru to the west port on the Strait of Malacca of Peninsular Malaysia. With five spur lines, provides 20 stations, comprising of 14 passenger stations, five combined passenger and freight stations, and one freight station. The line will take four hours from Kota Baru to Putrajaya. The electric-powered trains will feature six cars for every train set, with a capacity of 440 passengers, with a maximum operating speed of 160 km per hour for passenger trains, and 80 km per hour for freight trains. The East Coast Rail Link project reached the 30% completion mark in May and is on track to reach the target of 37% by the end of the year. Infrastructure works are ongoing concurrently in four states, and the three parcels are Section A from Kota Baru to Dungan, which will see development of a 210-kilometer rail link in the states of Kelantan and Terengganu. It will have six stations. Section B, the intersection of the rail link, which will connect Kimasik to Maroon. This 210-kilometer section will connect the eastern part of the state of Terengganu to the central part of the state of Pahang. This line will include 41 kilometers from five spur line station. Section C will connect Tamerlo to north and west port via KTM Jalan Kastam. 
The section will add 201 kilometers of the rail link, including 32 kilometers spur lines. There are now over 300 work sites along the 665 kilometers line. The rail line is expected to be fully completed by December 2026, with operations expected to start in January 2027. PNR North-South Commuter Rail Project, Philippines PNR North-South Commuter Railway is envisioned as a 163-kilometer sub-urban railway network. Connecting, the regional business districts in Clark and New Clark City in the north, passing through central Manila to Calamba City in Laguna Province, south of the capital. The NSCR corridor will provide interchange with all of the existing Metro Manila rail lines, through the connection of MRT Line 3 and MRT Line 9 of the Metro Manila subway. A notable feature of NSCR will be the first airport rail shuttle in the Philippines. This airport express service will reduce the journey time between Clark International Airport in Pampanga and Makati City, the main business district in the capital, to less than an hour, compared to at least two hours by car at present. NSCR's technical parameters envisage a maximum operating speed of 120 km per hour for the commuter trains, and 160 km per hour for the airport express and semi-fast services trains. NSCR Phase 1 Projects, Contract Package 1 Solis to Bokawi, is 31.04% complete. And Contract Package 2 Balagtas to Malolos, is 58.8% complete. With the columns for Contract Package 2 already 75.5% complete. Overall, NSCR Phase 1 is 51% complete, while NSCR Phase 2 is 32% overall progress rate as of September 2021. On the other hand, the South Commuter Railway Project or NSCR Phase 3, pre-construction activities begin by the latter part of 2022, and by February 2023, will begin the full-scale construction works. Once fully operational, the NSCR corridor is expected to carry up to 800,000 passengers per day. Link the high-speed rail system, with the double-track system to transport passengers to and from all important parallel economic cities of the northeastern region. Another approved high-speed rail project in Thailand, 
is the three airport rail link. The Don Muang, Suwanapung, to Otapau High Speed Railway. The three airport rail link is an underdevelopment high speed rail project. It aims to connect the two airports in Bangkok going to Otapau Airport in the Eastern Economic Corridor of Thailand. The line length is 220 km and it will run on a 1,435mm standard gauge track. The train will travel up to 160 km per hour in the urban area between Don Muang and Sawanapum, and up to 250 km per hour in rural area between Sawanapum and Otapau. The high-speed railway will include nine stations from Don Muang via Bang Su Grand Station, Makassan, Sawanapum, and Pattaya to Otapau. The rail link will be connected to what will eventually be the two biggest railway stations in Bangkok, Bang Su Grand Station and Makassan. The train will also have a stop at Pattaya, connecting Bangkok to the popular beachside city in under one hour. This is the second high-speed rail line project in Thailand after the Northeastern High-Speed Rail. The Airport High Rail project is part of a wider scheme to help boost infrastructure in Thailand. This is one of the eight mega-projects of the proposed high-speed railway routes of Thailand with an estimated total cost of 30 billion US dollar. The Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway, which is expected to begin commercial operations by June 2023, is a flagship project that synergizes China's Belt and Road Initiatives and Indonesia's Global Maritime Fulcrum Strategy. The Jakarta Bandung Line will be the first high speed railway in Southeast Asia with a designated speed of 350 km per hour, reducing the average commute time between both cities from 3 hours to 40 minutes, boosting economic competitiveness in regions along the route. The new line will revolutionize the local and visitor commute between Indonesia's bustling, chaotic capital of 32 million people and the colonial era West Javan city of Bandung with its 8 million residents and surrounding natural attractions. The train will have an operating maximum speed of 350 km per hour, with around 80 km of the line built on elevated viaducts to traverse urban areas and farmland. The planned launch date is June 2023 with further plans to extend the line east to Surabaya, which is currently a nine-hour journey from Jakarta. On the sidelines of the G20 summit in Bali, Indonesia, Chinese President Xi Jinping and Indonesian President Joko Widodo watched over a video livestream as the Jakarta Bandung High Speed Railway sped through its first trial run between Tigalur Station and Casting Yard No. 4 in Antara, last November 21, 2022. The high-speed EMU and comprehensive test train that rolled off the production line were developed with the advanced and mature technology of the Chinese standard Fuxing EMU at 350 km per hour, and adapted to the local operating environment in a tropical and humid country like the rest of Southeast Asia. According to China Railway, the EMU for the Jakarta Bandung HSR is designed to be capable of carrying 601 passengers, with one first-class car, one dining car, and six second-class cars. The EMU used on the Jakarta Bandung HSR adopts intelligent sensing technology and is equipped with earthquake monitoring and early warning systems. Through more than 2,500 detection points located along the whole train, all key systems can be monitored and assessed in real time. The EMU also adopts a high standard corrosion resistant design and advanced protection technology, making it more resistant to salt spray and ultraviolet radiation, including a fire monitoring system, an ACDC insulation monitoring system, the braking system, and an anti vibration system. The train can achieve a safe start on a slope of 30 degrees. It also adopts a technology that can regenerate energy from the braking system, which is less carbon intensive and more energy efficient. Smart technology makes fire and smoke monitoring systems smarter. The fire detector is self-learning, and can continuously upgrade itself during operation to make the alarm information more accurate. All the Jakarta Bandung HSR tunnels have been completed, and more than 90% of the subgrade, bridge, and station civil works have been completed. Track laying began on the main line in July. On the main line, the length of the ballasted track section is 112.8 km and that of the ballast less track section is 166.6 km, all of which use 50-meter rails produced in China. 
The Jakarta Bandung HSR is further proof that China's technology and standards for high-speed rail have now been recognized internationally. Before China secured the project, Japan had proposed building a Shinkansen-style rail link from Jakarta to Bandung. It was to cost 600 billion yen or around 6.2 billion dollars, where 75% or 450 billion yen will be funded via 40-year official development assistance loans, with an annual interest of 0.1%. But Widodo chose the Chinese option, which promised to transfer of high-speed rail technology and kept Indonesia off the hook for any costs or debt repayment. No sovereign debt will be recorded, instead, the loan will be booked to the newly formed joint venture with a Chinese firm. The project was funded by a debt-to-equity ratio of 75% loans from the China Development Bank and 25% startup capital from KCIC, a special-purpose joint venture in partnership with China Railway Group Limited and four Indonesian state-owned enterprises. The project financing from China Development Bank will cover for 40 years, on which 10 years grace period and 30 years of annual amortization with a 2% fixed interest rate.